What's up, y'all? It's Adam with Fraser. It's a big day today. So last week, we had our customer in do the final inspection on this. It went fantastic. They were ecstatic. It's their first unit with Fraser. There's a lot of stuff you have to see. So this is a Type 1 15-foot. It's a custom unit. We've never built a 15-foot unit before. Uh, for Floyd EMS, located in Rome, Georgia. Tons of collaboration on this unit. So Floyd EMS is a customer of our uh, East Coast sales partner, ETA. So they brought, uh, ETA brought Floyd to us saying, hey, I think there might be a unit opportunity for us, but it's gonna be something new. We need to collaborate on it. So it really, it started, no joke, it started out as they took masking tape on the floor of their conference room and said, this is a floor plan of a unit that we think we want. Can you build it? That's how this all started. And here we are. So a little bit about the truck. Like I mentioned, type one 15 foot custom neonate transport unit with a dual load stretcher system. It's mounted on a 2022 Ford F650 crew cab. So because it's a special critical care transport unit, they're, they're, they have a, a large crew. So it's a medic and several nurses. So they need a bigger cab than normal single cab. One thing you'll see on the front, really awesome, this light bar. So they wanted to see flashy, they wanted to see lights, they wanted to be wow with the first impression. So we found this light bar, it's through Power Arc and it's a collaboration between Power Arc and a high-vis fire tech. So really cool moving light heads. It's got a brow light in the front that flashes, but it overrides when you want it to be a, a clear bright light out front. Really, really awesome. This is our electrical compartment. Uh, so same general location as you've seen on our, on our other units. Uh, it does have an inverter, so that's, that's different and unique to this vehicle. So this, this truck has really three sources of redundant power. So we've got the Onan generator. Onan generator is running, it's powering everything, including the air conditioner on the module, even though the chassis is not running. So that's one source of power. The, the other source of power was if the generator was to fail, but the truck is still operational, you'll have 120 volt power through the 1500 watt inverter. And then the third redundant source of power is Fraser's standard 12 volt fail safe. So um, if the inverter and if the generator were, were to fail, automatic 12 volt would start pulling from the truck and you would have 12 volt accessories. Uh, all 12 volt accessories to the body, but you would lose any of your 120 volt, like your air conditioner. So three sources of redundant power, which was a big deal to Floyd EMS as, as we were talking through specifications. Uh, another uh, storage compartment over the wheel well. This one is a pass-through, so we call that an inside-outside. Uh, it's wider than we normally do, but we had some extra space, so we decided to use it up. They carry two main bottles, so one oxygen and, and one breathing air, both located in this exterior compartment. They will be vertical manual loads, but with something like a Tank Boss dolly, it'll make loading and unloading pretty easy. Uh, for licensing, like we said, the primary use of the vehicle is gonna be for neonate transport, but for licensing with the state, they also need to keep certain things like backboard, stair chair. So this is a stair chair space. Like I said, we're getting ready to deliver it. So this is stuff that goes loose with the vehicle. We just, we kept it in here for, for filming, but there's a pass-through, inside-outside pass-through here, vertical stair chair storage, and then just more exterior space down here. Fraser standard, legendary heater air conditioner. We mentioned Onan power. So this is the Onan generator compartment. It's running. Uh, it's only about 60 decibels, so you can barely hear it. Side entry door, exterior lower storage space, and then this is the second power load uh, door, the, the transverse loading for the power load. So, you know, they, they came to us with very specific dimensions once they put the ice light on the stretcher and have equipment hanging off both sides. So they give us dimensions tall and wide. So you'll see this is a wide door, but you know, we are very, uh, intentional in designing this. Same thing with our cabinet clearance above. We wanted to make sure for the first time they, they get that equipment loaded up and loaded in here, it's gonna clear perfectly. So uh, this is a transition plate. Uh, you'll flip this down for power load use, but this was intended in case this ever needed to be a, a, a non-power load stretcher, like the power load failed. Uh, you could still manually load a stretcher, and this is just a transition for the front wheels to, to roll on board. And I know it's been asked a bunch. There's been a lot of comments and questions, not just from Floyd, but from several agencies questioning the load height. So 
we've clarified and we're, 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 we're good to go and you'll see the video of this loading in and out, but we're at about 33, 34 inches. Uh, and so this loads up to 37 inches. So we're, we're, we're good on load height. And again, this is an F650 crew cab. I can't speak for other chassis. I think we'd be okay with the way we design our units, but I know that has been a big comment uh, has been, when you build a Fraser like this, can I easily load or unload my stretcher? The answer is yes. So part of the design requirements, Floyd mentioned that they wanted this locate this chair to be located where if they were transporting just a, a patient not in an isolate, you know, they could still work from the head. But also, you know, when they do have an isolate loaded from this location, you know, the, the critical care nurse, the neonate nurse can slide the chair forward and has access right here to everything that he or she might need. So again, this was one of those when they came in and saw the unit real time, and they sat in the chair and they swiveled around just like I did, they were blown away. They were like, perfect location, knocked it out of the park, works great. Uh, another thing that was a really big deal was the location of the outlets, the oxygen and breathing air, and also power. So we, we uh, located over, over the isolate both oxygen, breathing air, and power. So generator power, and fail-safe uh, inverter power, which are the red outlets. Um, and that's over both, both locations. So, you know, the one here and then the transverse one over here as well. Um, on the front wall, uh, underneath the front wall cabinet, we have the Sentinel clean air system. So that's gonna run all the time. Well, patient care is going on back here while the unit's just sitting idle. Uh, it's gonna be filtering and cleaning the air using NBPI technology. Uh, it's one of the newer technologies coming out for unit decontamination, sanitization, uh, and so I'm glad that uh, Floyd decided to go with that, um, considering you know, the patients that are back here. Uh, the Austin Hardware cabinet doors on all of our cabinets, they, they flip open, they slide. Most importantly, they're SAE certified and tested, uh, which is really a really big deal. Uh, the action area space over here, so, you know, pretty traditional action area with 120 volt power, 12 volt power, USB power. Again, more medical breathing air, action area light, thermostat and switching, uh, pretty basic stuff. Suction unit, uh, SAE crash tested, Technum out for, uh, I believe they use a Zoll, uh, Zoll monitor. Um, and then another thing, you know, because they have a large crew, communication is, is paramount. Uh, so they decide to go with the latest in the Firecom uh, Bluetooth wireless headsets. There's a headset here and there's also a headset in the driver cab so they can communicate back and forth and then the driver uh, headset up front can actually communicate over the radio as well uh, to communicate back to the hospital. Um, and then seating, so we've got uh, United Safety, their, their captain's chair here with integrated child safety seat, four point harness, but also we have their seat backs uh, at this patient right seat and the, the squad bench seat. So, you know, we, we've so, shown these in, in videos before, but these things are really comfortable. Uh, so, you know, they may be transporting for hours, you know, two, three hours each way. So having good, safe, but also comfortable seats is a really big deal. So the, feed, the feedback we've received is that the seat backs are very ergonomic, you feel very secure, but also you need to be able to move around and work. So with the four point retractors, you can move at the shoulders, you can move at the hips. And you notice I haven't had to touch anything. And depending on your height, I'm five foot 11, you can also stand up and move around a little bit. Now, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do any aerobatics or anything in these, but you know, you can move around more than you could with most traditional harnesses. So that's a big deal. Here's the access for the oxygen compartment here. More storage, Fraser air conditioner, heater air conditioner. Uh, this is a storage cabinet that um, is, was custom to this unit for them. Uh, they wanted three spaces. So we have adjustable shelving and then we put 120 volt power in specific location above each one of the shelves. They have equipment that needs to go stacked in there. And so that was custom built to their specifications. Talked about the Valor seating over here, um, more overhead storage, custom forward, uh, forward cabinet. So four drawers, really large size drawers for storing various supplies and equipment. 
So these are the Whelan MV, I think these are the M4V. So it's a red flashing light, but it's also a clear light. So when you open the door and the emergency lights are on, it flashes like you can see there, but also the clear light on the bottom starts illuminating the ground. Huge thank you to everybody at Floyd EMS, especially Bud Owens, William Channel, and Eric Vogel too with ETA. Awesome collaboration, taking it from masking tape on the floor to a finished product that's about to roll onto a trailer and head your way. Couldn't have done it without the help and the, the, the big ideas that you guys had. So thank you for trusting in us to build this. I look forward to working with y'all on more projects. Uh, anybody out there interested in a vehicle like this, or if you have a vision, if you woke up last night and had a vision and are thinking about putting masking tape on your floor, we are here to help you with that, to bring that vision to reality. Please visit us at FraserBuilt.com. We have tons of video content on there, units that are really cool, just like this one. Uh, you can also call and reach any one of our sales team members toll free at 888-372-9371. And we're killing it on social media. Subscribe, hit the like button, share it, do all the cool stuff. But yeah, follow us on social media and thank you again uh, for allowing us to, to build this unit.